Today, I'm announcing actions to bar migrants who cross our southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum. President Biden's executive order is changing the way immigration officials handle those who enter the country illegally. And what I see from this executive order is they're trying to um, crack down on you know, unlawful crossings. We spoke with immigration attorney Darius Amari. He says the big takeaway is just how quickly this order allows the federal government to turn away people which is a big change from how it is now. With the effect of this executive order, they could already be deported before they even have a chance to, to plead their case. The president's order allows officials to swiftly deport anyone who tries to cross without an asylum appointment. The order can be lifted if the daily average number of illegal crossings dips below 1,500, but it can also be reinstated if it goes above 2,500. I do think there'll be some exceptions. I did read that there would be exceptions for like unaccompanied minors and maybe people who have extraordinary cases. Victims of human trafficking is another listed exception. While those are the steps President Biden is taking towards the border, the Arizona State House is taking steps of their own. I have with me a copy of what they're calling the Secure the Border Act and it'll be in the hands of the voters in November. Amiri says if this act is passed, local law enforcement will have the ability to detain someone suspected of being here illegally, no matter how long they've been in Arizona, which is typically an authority only federal officials have. Let's say someone who came here as a child, never got their, their paperwork squared away, has been living under the shadows, working in a restaurant, or gets raided by sheriff's deputies and uh, you know, rounded up like cattle and put in a van and taken down to uh, Fourth Avenue and, and, and detained and deported. Again, that issue will be in the hands of the voters in November. Now, as far as both of these issues, Amari says he wouldn't be surprised if lawsuits are filed challenging both of them. Hmm. So, Stephen, for those who are seeking asylum, so many of them, are there any tools that can help them navigate all of this? Yeah, Vanessa. So last year, the federal government released an app for smartphones called CBP-1, and it would allow people to schedule appointments to seek asylum. But a recent CBS report revealed that some people, they were waiting over half a year, eight months to finally get those appointments. Yeah, it's definitely not a quick process. Stephen Sarabia, live for us tonight. Stephen, thank you. And Steve